Hello and welcome to Clareview Television. We are reaching you live from Niger's capital city, Abuja. First, the headlines. Two more unions break out of academic staff union of universities issued certificates by Labour Minister. Ukraine fertile crash claims interior minister, 15 others. Abuja orphanage home calls for financial assistance to help take children off the streets. I am Nkiru Obuli with these and more. The Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngiye, has issued certificates of registration to two new academic unions in the university system, the Congress of University Academics, Konoa, and the National Association of Medical and Dental Academics, NAMDA. Presenting the certificates on Tuesday in Abuja, the Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngige, charged the new unions to be professional in the discharge of their duties as he promises to address the issue of unpaid salaries urgently. Clairview TV's Ime Fonokon witnessed the certificate's presentation and reports. The Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Nkike, while issuing the Certificate of Registration to the Congress of University Academic, Konoa, and Nigeria Association of Medical and Dental Lecturers Academic, NAMDA, promised to see to the growth of the unions. The case are here now for you to operate fully as unions in your own rights. Let us have gone to the security agencies to accord you all rights of given to other unions for your meetings, annual general meetings, and delegates assembly. Same, I've been done to all government agencies, ministries, and departments, including the office of the Accountant General of the Federation, so that the check of duties will be dotted on source and given you. Note of warning, don't behave like us. Render your accounts to your followers and to government. We preach unity and solidarity for all. You have other unions in the university system, so we want you to cooperate with all of them. Nobody is superior to the other. You are all in government service, you are all public servants. The coordinator of Konoa, Dr. Ni Samuno, said the union will use the platform to promote national interest. Similarly, the national vice president of NAMDA, Dr. Ali Mohammed, expressed appreciation to the minister for the courage to take the bold step. He therefore showed that the union will impact on the quality of medical doctors produced from medical schools in Nigeria. With this completion of registration, we're using this medium to assure Nigerians that we shall embark on meaningful and realistic discussions and negotiations with the federal government and all other stakeholders on how we can get a better deal for our universities, for lecturers, and indeed for better working of the entire system without necessarily rocking, not to talk of sinking the boat. Lock out medical students for eight months and expect to get good doctors. You can never get that anywhere in the world. So this has to stop. And we are very happy we have a father that is so patriotic and has Nigeria at heart. You have stopped this nonsense from today. I can assure Nigerians the quality of medical doctors that will produce henceforth will be something everybody will be proud of. On the sideline, the minister used the occasion to interact with the media team of the ministry and expressed appreciation for their undiluted reportage. Well, I enjoy working with you people because some of the times you, you bring out our information undiluted. Most, or most of the time, that is what it is. We have not had cause to be fighting with our labor correspondents over misquoting and no misquoting. No. Imefo Nukun, reporting for Clevy Television. 
Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has presided over the first Federal Executive Council meeting for 2023. Mm -hmm. The meeting, which began a few minutes past 10 a.m., held at the Council Chambers of the Presidential Villa Abuja. Those attending include, included the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa, the head of service of the Federation, Dr. Falasha de Emerson, and the deputy chief of staff to the president, Dr. Adiola Ipai. Before the meeting commenced, council members observed Christian and Muslim prayers led by the ministers of youths and sports and his aviation counterparts. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari did not attend this Wednesday's meeting as he is away in North Chokt, uh, Mauritania, for the third forum of the African Conference for Peace. Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA Brigadier General Mohamed Buba Marwa retired, says unrepentant drug barons and cartels will face tough times in 2023 if they fail to go back or back out of the illicit drug business. Marwa gave the warning on Wednesday at a press briefing at the NDLEA National Headquarters Abuja to update the public on efforts by the agency in getting rid of illicit drugs on the second anniversary of his leadership of the anti-narcotics body. Clairview TV's Imifan Okon was there and now reports. It is the second year anniversary of the NDLEA chairman. Mohamed Buba Marwa is here to give an account of his stewardship since the assumption of office. Addressing a cross section of media practitioners, the NDLEA boss says the agency has recorded a tremendous progress with over 34 drugs barons already in their custody. We look forward to arresting more barons, and the 34 in the net presently will know their fates in court in the weeks and months ahead. The Process of Crime Act 2022, enacted last year, has given us new leverage. And I would like to remind those who benefit from the proceeds of drug crimes, this time families, friends and associates, that our investigations are thorough. And where we find any link between a drug baron and private citizens, we shall scrutinize the assets. The onus is now on every citizen to be honest in their financial dealings with people whose source of wealth is suspect. On his agenda of making Nigeria safe from illicit drugs, the NDLEA boss says plans are on top gear as the agency will sustain offensive action and shut down pipelines from other countries into Nigeria. We did all the necessary groundwork in 2022. We shall build on those foundations in 2023. For instance, we are in the process of concluding MOUs with our counterparts in India, Saudi Arabia, and South Africa. The bilateral relationships will help stem the flow of illicit opioids into Nigeria. The NDLEA boss, however, used the occasion to warn members of the public to be weary in their dealings with people of questionable wealth and also work in partnership with the agency to safeguard their health and their future. Imefon Okun, reporting for Clevy Television. In many end time preaching in churches today, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, Asexual, LGBTQ and more communities have become the focus for many pastors. Apart from reminding Christians to shun sin and evil, they are also campaigning against the acceptability of LGBTQ community in the church following the reports of many Christians coming out. Today, our personality in focus is a musician considered to be a practical Christian whose award-winning hymn took the whole Christendom by storm.
Rebolt, fortunately or unfortunately, is now gay. During the course of his more than 30-year career in the contemporary Christian music industry, Rebolt released nearly 20 albums, acquired three Dove Awards, two gold albums, one gold video, 12 number one singles, and sold more than 4 million units of products. When Bolt publicly announced his sexuality nearly 15 years ago, it sent the whole world to a frenzy. Many wondered why he would come out after a successful career many Christian artists would only dream of and a marriage of over 30 years that produced four beautiful children. Rebolt officially came out to the world as a gay man through an article in the Washington Blade in September 2008. Though Bolt was married to his wife Carol for 33 years and fathered four children with her, they are now divorced but still working together. According to him, he had been attracted to other men since he was a young man and it only got harder as he grew older. After being honest about his feelings with his family the day after Christmas in 2004, Rebold started actively moving toward a new direction with his life. He and Carol separated in 2005 and he moved to FD Lauderdale, Florida to start a new low-key life and get to know himself. In his new surroundings, he wasn't Rebold's the CCM singer anymore. He was just another guy taking graphic design courses, sorting out his life and faith. He has remained a recording and touring artist and a Christian and released an album in 2010 titled True. The album tackles topics from the fallout such as the self-explanatory Don't Tell Me Who to Love and Who Will Jesus Love as well as songs on hate crimes and opinions of political conservatives. In a recent interview, Bolt said it feels like he's finally at peace with who he is and lives a normal gay life now. As to why he decided to come out in such a public fashion, Bolt said, This is what it really comes down to. If this is the way God made me, then this is the way I am going to live. It's not like God made me this way and he'll send me to hell if I am who he created me to be. I really feel closer to God because I no longer hate myself. According to the Ray Bolt's website, the Christian musician is now retired and living in Florida with his husband, who is also his talent manager. The same struggle that gay people have today is that they love one another. They don't want to cause trouble. They don't want to change what anybody uh, how they pray or what you do in church. They just want to love one another and they want to live together and be one. And uh, so the song that I wrote says, don't tell me who to love. Don't tell me who to kiss. Don't tell me that there's something wrong because I feel like this. See, I always used to feel like there was something wrong. But don't tell me that there's something wrong because I feel like this. Uh, I know what's in my heart and that should be enough. This has thrown up a debate from here. We will keep talking to relevant people, pastors, analysts, sociologists, and even politicians, including Senator Obende Domingo, who sponsored the anti-gay bill at the National Assembly. Gloria Atta, reporting for Clearview Television. The Presidential Campaign Council of the All Progressives Congress in Kogi State says it is working assiduously to its 
sustain its dominance over the political landscape in the forthcoming February-March general elections across the states. Spokesman of the APC Campaign Council, Kinsley Farnwo, described the crowds at the stadium as rented to justify the dollars collected from the PDP presidential flag bearer, Atiku Abubakar. Clairview TV's correspondent has the details. The Director of Media and Publicity, Kogi State APC Campaign Council, Kingsley Fowl, said what PDP declared would be an overflow rally that would bring Kogi City to a standstill for the day, barely registered on the radar of hardworking Kogi residents. He said those who came out with the hope to hear something that might persuade them to reevaluate their poor opinion of the PDP were left reinforced in their disdain. He said there are diehard members who came in with expectations of the usual ajis associated with the party in her heyday became disappointed when the lie started. Dismayed by the poor turnout, the PDP resorted to tear tricks. It rolled out expired individuals who had been expunged from the ranks of the APC for their unsavory deeds and characters and proceeded to canonize them. The rally turned into a farce when people like the former deputy governor of the state, Heather Simon Achuba, and the former speaker of the state assembly, Right Honorable Alpha Imam, were repackaged for Atiku as Kogi APC stalwarts, who were decamping to the PDP at the rally. Farnworth said it soon became clear that the political justice in Kogi PDP had deliberately lied to their Dubai-based presidential candidate and his hangers on that all projects in Kogi states were done by them. The umbrella circles did not need anyone to tell them that Kogi people have rejected them just like they were rejected in 2015 and 2019. Even though they, they bust in supporters from outside the state, to beef up appearances, the modest crowd was eloquent enough. Crafty camera angles could not hide yawning gaps in the stands, and it was painful. It was painfully obvious that the former ruling party had been fittingly reduced to a shadow of itself in Kogi State over the last seven years. The director of media and publicity, Kogi State APC Campaign Committee, told journalists that the PDP cannot win an election in the state, even with the rented crowd. Florence Joshua, reporting for Clairview Television. On the foreign scene, the three main figures in Ukraine's interior ministry have been killed in a helicopter crash beside a nursery in an eastern suburb of the capital, Kiev. Interior Minister Denis Monastirsky. 42 died alongside his first deputy minister and state secretary. 16 people died when the helicopter came down in Brovary, including three children, according to updated details from the Ukrainian presidency. Monastirsky is the highest profile Ukrainian casualty since the war began. The deputy head of Ukraine's presidential office, Krylo Tomoshenko, said the minister had been en route to a war hotspot when his helicopter went down. His death caught to the heart of the government in Kyiv as the interior ministry has the vital task of maintaining security and running the police during the war. President Vladimir Zelensky has spoken of a terrible tragedy that claimed the lives of true patriots. There is no indication the crash was anything other than an accident, although witnesses said Russia's war was to blame for the disaster. Key officials are flown by helicopter across Ukraine at tree level, but that comes with risks. All that was recognizable of the helicopter was a door panel and one of its rotors, which landed on the roof of a car. Next to it were three bodies covered in foil blankets. The main kindergarten building was left badly damaged by the crash. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news on Clairview Television. When we come back, we'll bring you stories on women and children. Stay with us. The news continues now with stories from our area of specialization, women and children. After the main transmission of our news, we rebroadcast on our YouTube page, Clearview TV.
Do you operate a women or children's NGO? Are you at the helm of affairs of a government establishment or a corporate organization involved in the affairs of women and children? Then you are our partners in progress. We have a mission, a mission to better the lot of our women and children. Join us to celebrate womanhood and work assiduously to better the lot of the Nigerian child. This is our mission. The federal government and well-meaning Nigerians have been called upon to join hands with individuals who have taken it upon themselves to take children off the streets in order to reduce child trafficking and poverty in the society. Founder of Nanaberry Orphanage Home, Dr. Aisha Kwalmi, believes when parents and the government play their roles effectively, there will be little or no cases of child trafficking and molestation in the society. Clearview TV's patient report brings us details. And social development has estimated that there were about 17.5 million orphans and vulnerable children nationwide. These orphans are faced with enormous challenges and it was estimated that 95% of orphans and vulnerable children do not receive any type of medical treatment or social related assistance. That is why Clearview Television took a visit to Nana Berry Orphanage here in New Karo, Nasara State. <laughs> in this orphanage home are about 156 children under the care of Dr. Aisha Kwame. While narrating her passion and motivation for the job, she attributes poverty as a major reason why mothers neglect their children to suffer, calling for concerted effort from individuals and government agencies to reduce the number of children on the streets. The girl child is an endangered species, honestly, from the family, from, the, from everywhere. They need more protection. They suffer more. I don't understand how people... They, you know they don't send the male gender for all this child labor. Mostly it's girls. I don't know why. It's girls. Even if you are a, a, a couple and you maltreat your child, it is the duty of government to protect that child. So they take away the child from that environment. Some of them end up with us. But sometimes, if the parents are repentant and then government does proper follow-up, we reconcile the children back into the homes. Some don't get that opportunity, some stay here and grow up here. If the parents are not willing to take care of them, government will not abandon them on the streets. She also wants the federal government, corporate organizations and individuals to come to their aid by providing finance and enabling environment for children and women who suffer most times as a result of neglect. I'm conversing with a lot of homes. We suffer almost the same fate. We struggle to get food. We struggle to educate the children. All the children here from 10 years and above learn a skill. Some of those skills I pay for. Some good-hearted Nigerians will tell me, man, no, please, give small or don't give. Let me just help train your kids. We need a lot of help. Patients call me a 300-level student studying economics in the Adekunle Ajasin University couldn't be more grateful as she wants more from the society. And I don't even know whether if my mother was alive or my father was alive, I would get this great opportunity to reach up to this level of education. So I'm so very happy to reach this level. With these and many more of the challenges faced in the society, ranging from illicit drug abuse, child molestation and trafficking, it is expected that there is need to empower the women so as to eradicate poverty and make the society habitable for all. Patients Obot reporting for Clearview Television. A registered dietitian nutritionist at the Alex Akweme Federal University Teaching Hospital, Mwabuma Asuzu, says malnutrition has hidden dangerous impacts on the well being and survival of children. Besides making children more susceptible to diseases and infections, the nutrition expert says. Malnutrition slows wound healing and delays the recovery of children suffering from infections. Asuzu stated this during an interview with Newsman. She warned against ignoring the consequences of malnutrition in children as a statement by the United Nations agencies affirmed that Nigeria and 14 other countries were home to 30 million malnourished children. 
According to the dietitian, malnutrition is a serious public health problem and leads to stunted growth in children, and that stunting is a major contributor to child morbidity and mortality. The UN recently called for urgent funding to help 30 million children suffering from acute malnutrition before it is too late in countries being hammered by the food crisis. And with just a few days into the most watched reality TV show, Big Brother Titans, housemates have become too relaxed to the extent of sharing personal secrets. In a conversation with other housemates, Big Brother Titans housemate Nana from Kaduna State spoke on her sexuality, expressing that she does not enjoy sex. She made it clear that she is bisexual and has done a lot of things to survive and also shared a sad story of how she became a 300 level dropout because of certain mistakes she made and a lack of support from her family members. The 22-year-old further dived into more personal details as she revealed that she had once been pregnant for six months and had no idea to the extent that the child died and decayed in her womb. She further expressed that if not for her aunt, who came to her aid rushing her to the hospital after she had fainted five times, probably she would not have made it. She further blamed her lifestyle and means of survival on her parents' negligence as she dropped out from school in 300 level because there was no one to train her. And that's the news, but before we go, a recap of the top stories. Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Ngige has issued certificates of registration to two new academic unions in the university system. They include Congress of University Academics, Kaunwa, and the National Association of Medical and Dental Academics, NAMDA. Ukraine's Minister of Interior killed in a helicopter crash. Fifteen other people, including three children, died when the helicopter came down in the eastern suburb of the capital, Kiev. Abuja orphanage home Nana Berry has called on well-meaning individuals and governments to come to their aid and help take children off the streets. Founder of the home, Dr. Aisha Athanasius, believes such collaboration will go a long way in reducing cases of child trafficking and molestation in the society. Remember to like us on Facebook, Clairview Television. Follow us on Twitter at Clairview Online. Follow us on Instagram at Clairview TV underscore NG. And also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel Clairview Thanks for watching. I am Kiro Obuli. Watch on here too.